Hello, my name is Shahriar Shahriari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory linear algebra based on my book, Retrolinear. This particular lecture is about polynomials and using them as an example of a vector space. So what are the goals of this short lecture? We are gonna tell you what polynomials are. We're gonna talk a little bit about the notation, the vocabulary, and some examples. Uh, but uh, mainly we're gonna focus for a little bit on the two operations, there's many others, addition and scalar multiplication for polynomials, which because that's what is relevant for linear algebra and vector spaces. And as such, we will describe polynomials thinking of them not as so much as functions, but as vectors in a vector space. And uh, we will also focus on not only just all polynomials, but the ones that are of degree no more than n when n is some kind of an integer, a positive integer. Okay, so let's get started. So uh, to define what a polynomial is, you probably have seen polynomials. You start with a non-negative integer n. So n could be 0, 1, 10, 15, 47. And, and then you pick n, uh, n plus 1 real numbers, a0, a1 through a n. And then you form an expression of the form a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus dot, 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 plus a n x n. And an expression of that form is called a polynomial. And that's a polynomial with x in x, the variable is x, and with coefficients in, the, in r. Uh, um, the blackboard r means real numbers. So the coefficients that we're picking are real numbers. The coefficients could be other things, but, but for us, uh, most of the time, the coefficients are just real numbers. And um, the degree of a polynomial, you might say, well, okay, the degree of this polynomial is n. That wouldn't be um, uh, quite right because the way I've defined a polynomial, a n, the coefficient of x to the n could be zero. So the way to define the degree of a polynomial is to say is the um, highest exponent of x that has a non-zero coefficient. Um, okay, and so for example, 2x to the 47 minus 50x cubed plus three, that's a polynomial in x of degree 47, while px equals 47 is a polynomial of degree zero. Um, the one polynomial that we have not, don't have degree for is the polynomial px equals zero because it doesn't have any non-zero coefficients. So there is no degree that has a non-zero coefficient. So that, that guy does not have a degree, but everyone else uh, does have a degree. Okay. Now, again, you're used to seeing polynomials as functions. Um, the zero polynomial, y equals zero, that's if you, if you want to, for example, graph it in two dimensions, that's just the x-axis. Uh, that's the polynomial that does not have a degree. Uh, the polynomial of degree zero are things like y equals one uh, or 47 or whatever. And so those are horizontal lines. Uh, polynomials of degree one are other kinds of lines. So it's things like y equals two x plus one. Uh, you, you have seen quadratics. Those are parabolas, something like y equals minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 1, and cubics and quartics. Uh, so, so in calculus, for example, you're used to uh, drawing these functions and, and, and looking at their properties. These are important functions in calculus, mainly because they're very easy to work with. So for example, if you want to know the slope um, of any one of these functions, if you have some phenomena in the real world and you have modeled it using polynomials, then finding the rate of change, the slope, how fast things are changing is very easy. That's because taking derivatives of these functions are, are very easy. And in fact, calculus's idea, main idea is that, well, we can study these functions and find their derivatives and their rate of change and so forth, but we can approximate other functions using these. So the idea of Taylor polynomials and Taylor series is that you pick a complicated situation that you want to model, but you look at it locally at one point, and then you approximate it with these functions. Um, so uh, th these polynomials are things that are used all over the place, but we're, we're not going to be actually looking at them as, as functions as much. Sometimes we plug in things in them and think of them as functions, but often we want to think of a polynomial as an object, just this polynomial, and we want to see what can we do in the world of polynomials? What are the games we can play? And, um, and so we're not really interested in just one polynomial and seeing, well, okay, what we can do with that and what are its properties. We're interested in the set of all polynomials. So the set of all polynomials that are in X and their coefficients are real numbers, we denote that by P of R. Actually, a slightly better notation is Rx. That's what's used in, in abstract algebra, for example. But for us, 
just to remind ourselves that we're talking about polynomials, we'll use um, P of R. And the R will mean that the coefficients are real numbers. Now, what kinds of things can we do in P of R? So you walk into the world of polynomials all over the place, they're objects. Each of those objects is one polynomial. Not, um, you know, don't think of it as made up of things uh, like, like x cubed and five and so forth, but you think of five x cubed plus three x as one polynomial. And these are these objects, what can you do with them? Well, there are many things you can do with them, but the things we are interested in doing with them is adding them. You can add two polynomials and you get another polynomial and you can multiply a polynomial with a scalar, with a real number, and you get another polynomial. Of course, you can also multiply two polynomials together and get another polynomial, but that's actually not a property that we're interested in as uh, since we are interested in uh, the vector space properties and not so-called ring properties of, of polynomials. Okay, and not only we have an addition, we have a set, the set of objects is the set of polynomials, but we also have an addition and scalar multiplication. We have those things, but these addition and scalar multiplication satisfy the same properties as the ones in Rn. Remember Rn is n space. That was the object of the previous lecture. And we went in some detail into the fact that elements of Rn, you can add them and you more can multiply them by scalars. And those are operations that actually make some sense uh, for Rn. And they satisfied certain properties. And I'm going to go over them very quickly um, in the next slide. But polynomials, even though they sort of look different, um, they satisfy the same properties. And so in, in, when we abstract out this idea of having a um, addition and scalar multiplication, we see that this addition and scalar multiplication behave the same in these two different worlds, Rn and P of R. So adding two polynomials, how do you do that? Well, you add like terms. So if you're adding 3x squared minus 2x plus 10 to 5x to the fourth uh, plus 4x squared plus 7, well, there are only one term, 5x to, uh, x to the fourth term, so that stays. But x squares, there's two of them. There's 3x squared and minus 4x squared. You have three apples. You eat uh, four of them. You're short one. Um, and scalars, for example, 10 and 7 add, and you get 17. But you only have one x term, so that's just minus 2x. There is no x cubed term, so you get 5 to the x to the fourth minus x squared minus 2x plus 17. And likewise, how do you multiply by a scalar? Well, you just multiply true. So 7 times this quantity, you just multiply seven by each of the terms and, and you get another polynomial. The point is that you can add two polynomials and get a polynomial, and you can take a polynomial and multiply it by a real number, you get a polynomial. Again, sort of a trivial thing. Uh, <clears throat> now, what are these properties that I was talking about that they share with um, uh, Rn? So um, the objects are different here. They're polynomials as opposed to n tuples, but, but uh, the properties are going to be the same. So if you take two polynomials and two real numbers, alpha and beta are real numbers, p and x and q of x are two polynomials, some mystery polynomials that I don't know what they are. Um, I do know that it's commutative. px plus qx is the same as qx plus px, just like addition in Rn was commutative. It's associative. Um, we have a specific polynomial, the zero polynomial, the y equals zero, the x-axis guy, that if you add it to other polynomials, nothing happens. That's the property that makes something zero. If you add it to other things, it doesn't change it. And we have such a thing. Um, I bold face it to zero just to focus on the fact that I'm thinking of the zero polynomial, not just the zero number. I mean, it's the same thing, but, but the zero, when I'm thinking of zero polynomial, I'm thinking as y equals zero as, 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 as that line. And for every polynomial, you can multiply it by minus sign, and then you get its negative. It's a polynomial that if you add to the original one, you get the zero polynomial. And addition uh, and, and scalar multiplication has the properties it should. So um, if you multiply alpha by px plus qx, you could say alpha times px plus alpha times qx. You can distribute the alpha in. Or if you have alpha plus beta to real numbers added multiplied by px, you could do alpha px plus beta px. You can do that if you like. Um, and alpha beta times px is the same as alpha times beta px. And the silly one at the end is that if you take the number one and multiply by px, you get px. Again, these are not super profound properties, but there are properties that this addition scalar multiplication have. You could think of other properties. Like for example, if you take the number zero and multiply it by px, you get zero. I didn't write that down uh, because I don't actually, uh, but, but because, because people have thought through things and these are actually the right properties to focus on. 
and, and some other ones we will actually derive from these. We don't wanna just add on properties that we have to just remember. These are gonna be the ones that we are going to use. In fact, these you don't need to remember either. <clears throat> Soon we will get away from looking at these basic properties and looking at structures instead. So PFR is an example of a vector space. So what is a vector space? I haven't formally in this series of lectures yet defined a vector space. I will do that a little bit later, but, our, but, uh, but, but what a vector space is, I'm gonna tell you, this is a spoiler alert. Um, it's a set of objects, but abstract in the sense that I don't know what those objects are. And, and a set of objects that has an addition. And again, I don't know what the addition is. I just know that you can take two elements of the set, add them and get another one. And there's a scalar multiplication and that addition and scalar multiplication follow the rules, the ones that we just were looking at for polynomials. And we had the same rooms, rules for Rn. And, um, and, and yeah. So uh, of course in polynomials, there's other things you can do. Like for example, you can multiply them and that's a very useful thing, something that, uh, uh, that one studies in, in detail um, also, but, but not here. Right now, we're not, that's not our focus. Our focus is addition and scalar multiplication. Um, now, polynomials, when we look at the world of polynomials, when you walk in, you have polynomials of degree a million and of polynomials of degree three and so forth. So the question is that, can we look at a smaller world of just polynomials um, of degree 47, for example? Would that also be whatever this vector space is? That, that would also that be a set of elements, polynomials of degree 47, that I can add and, and multiply by scalars and life would be good. Well, of course, I would have to throw in the zero polynomial because I need the zero polynomial. That's not degree 47, but maybe polynomials degree 47 plus the two together with the zero polynomial. Um, would those be okay? And the answer, actually, think about it a little bit. Be, I mean, maybe stop the video and think about the answer to that. And the answer is no, not if we want a vector space. And the reason is that you can add two polynomials of degree 47 and get a polynomial that's not of degree 47. Now, of course, so, so do I, can I add polynomials of degree 47? Of course you can add them. But the problem is that when you add them, you're not gonna get a polynomial of degree 47. So you don't have a proper addition in the sense that in the world of polynomials degree 47, you don't have an addition. If you want an addition, you have to think of these polynomials as sitting inside the bigger world of all polynomials so that when you add them and you get something else and not something in that world, you're okay. Um, and, but we could restrict ourselves if we wanted to, to polynomials of degree 47 or less together with the zero polynomial. If you do that, then we are okay. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that um, you will have an addition. If you add two polynomials whose degree is 47 or smaller, you will get a polynomial whose degree is 47 or smaller. And if you take a polynomial of degree 47 or smaller and multiply it by scalar, you still will get a polynomial of degree 47 or smaller. And all those properties that we had before will also be satisfied. As a result, uh, we give it a name. We, that's, we, we modify that P of R to P sub N of R. And that is going to denote for us the set of all polynomials, in, in, um, uh, all polynomials whose degree is no more than N. By saying no more than n, I don't have to add the zero polynomial because the zero polynomial is a polynomial with degree no more than n. Its degree isn't more than n because it doesn't have a degree. But but um, uh, so so all polynomials of degree um, uh, less than or equal to n together with zero is PNR. And this set, um, I mean, this is for a specific n um, with uh, with the same usual the same polynomial addition and scalar multiplication is another example of a vector space. Okay, now, so what's our project? I'm done talking about polynomials right now. We will use our linear algebra to learn much more about these polynomials, about dimension, about uh, linear combination, spanning, whatever, whatever those things are, but, but we'll come back to them. But right now we're thinking of, all we're doing is find, thinking of different world uh, things in the world of mathematics um, that, um, uh, that we are trying to abstract this idea of vector space from. So we're looking at different places where we have a set of objects, an addition, a scalar multiplication, and they follow those rules. And, and, these are, and this is the thing we are, we're abstracting out. We're doing the same thing that uh, one does to come up with the number five. Um, you look at five cows, five trees, five cars, and then you say, well, okay, there's this thing that they have in common. Um, it's not their shape, it's not their color, but it's something else is the quantity of how many things I'm seeing there. And I'm going to call that five. And then you 
you try to study that number five and other numbers like it and, and, and see, for example, that five plus three seven, uh, is eight, and then use that when you have five cars and three cars and five trees and three threes or five cows and three cows um, and, and, and have done that once all, for all of them. We're gonna do the same thing. We're looking at different worlds um, and, and abstracting out this idea of a vector space. So again, what's a vector space? A vector space is a set together with a addition and a scalar multiplication that follow our silly rules. Um, and then we'll try to talk about what we will try to uh, do is study vector spaces. Um, and, and, and the advantage of that is that when it, if you prove something, then it's going to be, be used for all of these examples. Um, and, and we want to, before we do that, though, we want to know that there are enough examples of vector spaces for that study to be worthwhile. And as I've said before, um, the, the, the problem is that you might think that the properties that we had, if you don't know what the elements of this set are, if you don't know what the addition and scalar multiplication are, but we just know those properties, those properties seem very weak. Um, they, seemed, um, they seemed like a sort of an impoverished uh, system to be studying. And what, can, what kind of profound thing could you say? And that's something that I can't convince you right now, but by the end of this series of lectures, I'm sure you will be convinced that there's actually a lot we can say. And it's actually surprising how much we can say and, and how much um, uh, detail this study can get and, and information we can get and then use for all of these different situations. But right now we are in the process of looking at examples and this lecture was one example, polynomials. Um, again, a vector space is a set of objects with a rule for addition and scalar multiplication uh, in such a way that some uh, certain rules are followed. And those rules are not um, that, that complicated rules. Um, I mean, it's a game that we're going to play, and we, we have said what the rules of the game are, but the, games are, but the game seems pretty simple to play. Uh, so far, in the previous lecture and this lecture, we have seen four examples of vector spaces. Um, N tuples, Rn, um, the set of um, uh, sequences, R infinity, um, the set of all polynomials, and the set of polynomials of degree less than or equal to N together with the zero polynomial. Each one of those are different worlds. They, they behave uh, differently, but they're examples of vector spaces. If we were interested in just one of these, then we would study that one thing because um, there's actually a lot more to um, that one thing than being a vector space. And, and so you, you could get a richer theory by just focusing on that. But what we are trying to do is study them all at once. And so we're trying to figure out uh, what kinds of things they have in common and what kind of a language can be developed for talking about all of these at once. And next time we'll add to this collection and we'll add to this collection by talking about matrices. And, and then the, the, and we also will talk in a different lecture about functions and complex numbers, all as examples of vector spaces. Um, I'll see you next time.